This is the shining moment, the pinnacle of success in competitive speaking in Toastmasters. The second year in a row, I'm blessed to be back for the finals. There's gonna be a lot of newcomers on stage for the first time, except for myself, which would make me the favorite, but I don't wanna be the favorite. I'm still the underdog. I put all 100% of myself into this. I think you do have to have that just focus and that vision to get there, and that's what it took for me to get to where I am right now. My best. It's winning. It's not coming in second. It's not coming in third. It is blowing this thing out of the window. This speech is not just mine. It is Chelsea's. We woke up at five in the morning. We traveled to 50 different clubs all around the state. I was speaking 11 times a week before this contest, and it wasn't ever me. It was always us. She was my coach the whole way. This is an exciting event. Nine of our most talented Toastmasters are here to compete for the World Championship of Public Speaking. The finalists are a little scatterbrained at the moment. They're very excited. Most of them are probably pretty anxious as well. I was a very shy and nervous kid and I was giving my first presentation and I just froze and I said from that day on I'm going to find a way to improve myself because I'm tired of being that little kid who doesn't speak up. I know I can speak well in public because I've been trained. Those moments where you're actually nervous and you're fearful, well that's a friend now, it's not a stranger. I am so excited. Honestly, I know that that might sound crazy, but I know that speech. I have it memorized, I have it staged, it just all comes down to now. I want to go and give that speech to 2,000 people. Let the speech contest begin. Our first contestant, Andrew Nebo. Allow me to introduce you to Henry Kneebone. He wrote his life story down in a journal with a twist. It was a poem, one long poem from start to finish. And this from a man who never went to school. I'm now so far beyond where I actually thought I'd get to. It's gravy, you know, but now I want it. And I really do. Son, this man is you. His blood is your blood. Read his story and know that he suffered and prospered and use that to give you courage. Stuart Pink, why not use the two most important words in the English language? Without these two tiny words, our world would not exist. Do you want to hear what they are? What if? Every great question that has advanced civilization started with what if? Ronald E. Melvin. It was the 1980s. I was living in Rochester, Minnesota. 110,000 people and three of color. Me, myself, and I. Palaniapa <laughs> Subramaniam. There are millions of people out there who can't afford a single pair of shoes. And yet, many of us who have more than 20 pairs, ladies 50 pairs, you are still complaining. At this level, everyone knows the judging criteria. So to me, I believe the judges look for who is able to connect with the audience. And if you're able to actually take them on a journey with you, just like in a movie, then you've sealed the deal. So why not all of you? Take off your shoes right now. I don't want to be alone. Come on, take it off. <laughs> and tell yourself that these shoes are designed for me. Appreciate how far these shoes have carried you in life. Our seventh contestant is Kenny Ray Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, what are you running from today? 
My focus now is not on winning, but connecting with my audience. And if I could do that successfully, I think winning would take care of itself. We should all heed the wise words of one Mark Twain when he says, do that which you fear most and the death of fear is certain. Diane Parker. The greatest tragedy in life is not death, but living your life bound by traumatic experiences from your past. I will no longer reap what my past continues to sow. Ryan Avery. I was finally able to leave small town Texas and I went to college in Colorado. And I met the girl. Tall, curly hair, a tattoo or two. Does this speech send a message? And are you going to remember it a week from today? And if you're going to remember it a week from today, it's a great speech. That's what the judges are looking for. For the wedding, my mom reminded me that trust is a must if I want this marriage to last. I am at the altar, sweating in my wool suit. And Chelsea is glowing in her white dress. Chelsea, I promise. That concludes our speech contest. Counters, please collect the ballots. I have the winner, Amber Lord with me. Are you all ready? In third place, Stewart Pink. In second place, Palanyabang Subramaniam. And a 2012 World Champion of Public Speaking. Ryan Avery. I didn't want to just go up and give a speech. I promised my mentor that I would go and send a message that matters to my heart. And when I gave that, I just felt so good. Ryan's speech was excellent, and I tip my hat to him. I really do. It was bloody well done. I'm feeling a little sting right now. But that's okay, that'll wear off, and I'm already thinking about what I need to do to improve because one of my lifetime goals is to win this. Public speaking has given me the ability to do things that I never would have thought of doing before. At 66, people are telling you you're downhill. I'm just starting. <laughs>